name crazy joe gallo location new york specialty extortion title hitman slash enforcer for the capitals of the profaci family history gunman and the albert anastasia hit working for a company you sometimes realize you're making the boss rich while he's giving you peanuts if you ever felt that way then you have something in common with the gallows now let me ask you a question did you kidnap your superiors and demand more money? No, but Joey and his crew did. In February 1961, the Gallo crew of Carmine Persico sent out limos to kidnap the Profoxy family underboss and four capos. The boss, Joe Profoxy from Florida, agreed to the terms to get the men free. But Joey and Larry Gallo couldn't see eye to eye on what to do with the hostages. Joey wanted to kill them because he did not trust the boss. And he was right. After Profoxy broke in every promise he gave, the only thing Profoxy had for them was a casket. August 20th, 1961, Carmine Persico would show that money and power wins over loyalty. With Profoxy paying him well to turn on the gallows, he invited Larry Gallo to a bar to discuss strategy against Profoxy, but it ended up being a blindside attack with rope around Larry's neck. A cop approached the bar, wondering why doors were open on an early Sunday. The cop walked in and made the mobsters flee the scene. The cop questioned Larry, but he gave him nothing. 24 hours after the attack, Joe Gallo car was shot at. Luckily, Joey wasn't in the car at the moment. Joey Gallo main enforcer Joe Jolly had a history of going fishing with Sally. He didn't think anything when he was asked to go fishing. He didn't think that Carmine Persico would be on the same boat. Carmine, Frankie No-Nos, and Sally dismembered his body, dumping the parts into the ocean. Joe Jelly's finger was delivered to the restaurant of the Gallo brothers' parents. The message would be, Joe Jelly sleeps with the fish. The Profaci family declared war on the Gallo, so each side went to the mattresses, with chicken wire covering the windows so no one could throw a bomb. Time after, the Gallows would jump a Neil Della Croce at a restaurant in Little Italy. At the time, Neil was a capo for the Gambino family. October 4, 1961, while headed into a restaurant, Joey Maggs was killed. Joe Gallo arrived in the same car, but crossed the street to say hello to a friend when a mass shooter started firing. The Gallo crew got the drop on Joe Profaci and headed to the hideout in Jersey, but no sign of the boss. In the same month, Two shooters from the Profaxis attempted to kill Gage Ferlano outside of his house, causing him to split sides. November 11, 1961, a shootout happened in the Brooklyn nightclub, resulting in two dead, one being a club owner, and one person taking a bullet to the knee. The Gallows came to the realization that they were all getting shot and guys were switching sides. On December 2nd, Carmine Persico and Sally were dressed as females inside of a convertible to hunt down Larry Gallo. With a shotgun laying across his dress, Carmine lifted the gun and shot at Larry but missed. December 11th, three Gallo associates got fired on by shooters coming out of a paint shop. One shot, but no one was killed. Mid-December, Joe Pafashi canceled assigned hits and declared a ceasefire. Larry Gallo was approached with an offer of peace, but the Gallos wanted Pafashi to step down. January 29th, 1962, Two Gallo's associates came out of a restaurant to their car having a flat tire. As they were changing the spare on the car, a car drove by and shot at them, causing the ceasefire to end. March 5th, bullets flew in Joe Profaci's direction, but nothing hit him. March 11th, the word on the street was that Profaci was ill and it was time for him to step down. The Gallo's reached out to the commission to settle the dispute between the Profaci's. Carlo Gambino accepted it, and meetings were held in Chicago and Detroit. The boss, Joe Profaci, was asked nicely to step down, and in June 6, 1962, he died of liver cancer. The Gallows had no say-so, and the commission refused to recognize them due to starting a war. The Gallows would have to apologize to the commission just to get back in. Joseph Maglioco becomes boss by force without an okay from the commission. He held a grudge against the Gallows because he pissed himself during the kidnapping early on. October 1962, two low-level Gallo associates went missing. 
Carmine Crisco wanted to make it clear that he'll take out top guns and low levels. In May 1963, Punk Chief from the Gallo crew would shoot Carmine Crisco's bodyguard Hugh McIntosh. The same month, Crisco would survive a car bombing. A metal plate under the seat would save Carmine, but he was left pretty banged up. Weeks later, his car would be shot up. Bullets coming through his hands, shoulders, and cheek. He would survive. I have a video on that situation. If you haven't saw it, you should go watch it. June 12th, Punchy from the Gallo crew would be shot. The shooter would be killed by return fire by a Gallo crew member. For some reason, some of the Foxy members switched over to the Gallos. I guess it was something about being an underdog. For example, 59-year-old Joseph Cardiello switched to the Gallos and would have his car sprayed, killing him at a stoplight on Carmine's personal birthday. Gallo crew member Cadillac Lewis' car was shot while his wife was in the passenger seat. Lewis was hit but recovered and his wife didn't keep her mouth shut, naming Fats Regina as one of the shooters. Both Fats and Batista was convicted to murder one. July 24, 1963, Gallo crew member Ali Baba was shot to death in New Jersey. Joseph Melioko and Joe Bonanno plotted to kill Tommy Lucchese and Carlo Gambino to take over the commission. Melioko chose Joe Colombo for the hit, but Colombo ended up telling. The commission rewarded Colombo with being the boss of the family and immediately changed the name to the Colombo family. Melioko ended up retiring and dying shortly after. With Colombo being the boss, the Colombo war will be over. A lot of guys didn't respect the way that Jim Colombo became boss. He was only the boss because of Carlo Gambino. And Joey Gallo ended up going to jail. Larry Gallo ended up dying in his sleep in 1968. And you know, Carmine, he was in and out of jail. So this war was filled with death, arrest, Guys shot, money slowing up, men switching sides. That's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when I post. And I'll see you guys at the next war. Thanks for watching.